mitochondria are a, a subcellular organelle uh, that is a, a, a structure within the cell, a membrane bound structure, double membrane bound structure within the cell. Uh, it's in virtually every cell of your body, uh, in every cell of any uh, um, uh, uh, animal or even uh, plants. Um, all multicellular organisms uh, have mitochondria in every one of their cells. Uh, and in fact, cells can have up to a thousand mitochondria within uh, 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 the plasma membrane. This is a, a significantly a large number of these uh, subcellular organelles. Uh, they're best known for uh, the production of energy. They produce the, the uh, cell's energy, the body's energy. Uh, and it's done by uh, converting uh, glucose or triglycerides uh, into adenosine triphosphate, uh, which is a, a nucleotide uh, and um, that, that is actually found in DNA, adenosine, uh, uh, with uh, three high energy phosphate groups attached to it. Uh, that's the currency of the cell. Uh, it it uh, acts as an electrical modulator uh, where the ATP uh, can uh, uh, modulate or, or tune the uh, electrical, electromagnetic characteristics of all those functional units of the cell, all, all those nanomachines, the, the enzymes and uh, uh, um, microtubules and uh, all, all of those structures, um, uh, uh, the, the ATP is central to that. Now, uh, mitochondria uh, is extremely interesting because uh, it has its own genome. Uh, it has a, uh, a, a small circular DNA uh, known as a plasmid uh, that exists independently of the nuclear DNA. The DNA that is in each one of your, the, the nucleus of each one of your cells. Uh, now, uh, it, th this uh, plasmid, this, this DNA in the mitochondria allows it to uh, produce uh, its own uh, proteins uh, uh, independently of the uh, nucleus of the cell. Uh, well, it, it was uh, pretty perplexing for a while uh, how uh, the mitochondria could have incorporated this plasmid, could have uh, had its own uh, DNA. But what was uh, discovered by uh, Margulis, Dr. Margulis, uh, a um, preeminent microbiologist, uh, she and her team uh, demonstrated and proved that uh, the mitochondria is actually uh, a symbiont, uh, a bacteria uh, that was at one point in the evolutionary past incorporated into uh, another organism, another cell. Uh, so it, 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 this symbiotic relationship occurred uh, where essentially uh, a bacteria took up residence inside another one, uh, and that was actually the birth, the establishment of the multicellular lineage of all life. Uh, this is what enabled uh, the, the, the origin of, uh, of multicellular organisms. Up till this point, it was all monocellular organisms that they would form uh, uh, colonies, uh, but nothing with the kind of uh, organizational synergy that you see that's mediated by the mitochondria. Uh, so what is it about the mitochondria that enables this increased communication, this increased uh, coherency? Uh, so 
Uh, there's a, a couple of interesting things. So I'm going to hit these as just a couple of points. Uh, the uh, mitochondria is the single most uh, um, uh, important source of biophotons, uh, which is a weird name because they're photons. A photon is a photon, but they're produced in the cell, so they're called biophotons. But uh, uh, the, the mitochondria generates light within the cell. Uh, and it's been demonstrated that uh, the mitochondria can function as an optical waveguide. Uh, so um, mitochondria uh, exist predominantly as these tubular filaments coupled to the uh, uh, cell cytoskeleton microtubules. Uh, and so what is most likely occurring is that you've got uh, this generation of light, uh, coherent light, uh, like a laser light, uh, that is being transmitted through these optical waveguides, the mitochondria. And this is uh, part of the, the way that uh, cells uh, communicate, coordinate, and change their behavior. And those photons are being generated from the quantum vacuum. Uh, so it's a direct mechanism where information from the field is coming into the cell. Uh, and of course, uh, light transmission occurs extremely rapidly, uh, which is uh, beneficial. Um, they're, they're coupled strongly to the uh, microtubules, which is important for um, uh, enabling some of the information processes associated with uh, microtubules, which is, as many probably know, uh, uh, most focus has been on microtubules. Uh, but this is kind of a, a, what I like to call a tubule vision, uh, because uh, microtubules are fascinating, really interesting structures. Uh, but one of the main reasons that they were uh, invoked uh, as sources of this kind of non-trivial uh, quantum mechanical uh, processes uh, is regarding the Copenhagen interpretation, which we know is a flawed model. Uh, so um, the, 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 the uh, microtubules, I, in my view, uh, or have not turned out to be as important as some of these other models like to, to uh, focus around them. Um, the, the, the mitochondria, the plasma membrane, these structures are, are probably some of the most important and pivotal uh, in terms of uh, the, the information process, processes of the cell, and that is uh, bringing information from the field, uh, exchanging information with the field uh, and using that to, to coordinate uh, cellular activities. Um, you know, the, the astonishing array of uh, biochemical uh, uh, orchestration that's occurring every second in the cell, it, it needs uh, a, um, some kind of phenomenal mechanism of coordination. Uh, to make it happen with the kind of coherency that is observed. Uh, and I think the mitochondria uh, is one of the, the, the main sources of this coherency. Uh, one of the things I like to liken it to uh, is the uh, uh, midichlorians of uh, Star Wars. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Jedi, the, the amount of power and attunement with the force that the Jedi ha has is determined by how many midichlorians the Jedi has. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that if you just change that to, to mitochondria, <laughs> you've got a really good analogy there.